Well, November is National Diabetes Month and a global diabetes epidemic really leading to overwhelming demand for insulin. Diabetes now affects 9% of adults worldwide. That's up 5% from 5% back in 1980. And the demand for insulin is so high that experts predict that half of the 79 million people who need it, well, they won't be able to get it by 2030. Joining me now, Fox News contributor Dr. Nicole Sapphire. Um, this is uh, pretty worrisome, obviously. And who, who, who's making this? Can they speed up production? Or is this just a race? Uh, uh, the, the numbers are too large. Well, you know, by 2030, we're going to have about 511 million with diabetes. And what this we're is talking globally, about. Right? That that's globally, yes. Okay. And so, but what we're talking about right now are ins those who require insulin. So half of the people with type 2 diabetes require incident, or insulin, and all those with type 1 require it. We have three main manufacturers of insulin, and that it is a legalized monopoly right now, and only one is in the United States. And President Trump's really trying to work on getting uh, cheaper, less expensive insulin onto the market, um, but when it comes to patent infringement, we're having a little difficult time with that. So a legal monopoly. So what we really need to do is make sure that we can get the less expensive um, insulin on the market like they have it uh, internationally. You can go to Europe or even Canada, and you can buy our older product, animal-based insulin, significantly cheaper than what we have in the United States, and they work actually the same. Mm -hmm. But again, the legal monopoly we have going on here, which President Trump is tackling. Um, but I like to talk about how can we actually prevent it, because just because these are our projections, we can actually make sure. some moves to sure. prevent these cases of diabetes. It's not necessarily, you know, this isn't actuality. What about prevention? And I want people to start talking about that. And why, why are we already worrying about what the treatment is going to be and the lack of insulin? What about, how about having people avoid using it well, altogether? Well, to your point, so the audience knows, in 2015, uh, we had 30 million people in this country, 9% of the population with diabetes. Only 1 million of them, though, had type 1. In other words, the overwhelming majority of folks kind of ate themselves into, into this predicament. And, 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 and there's always been this sort of rub that, uh, you know, we're talking almost 80,000 deaths annually. We're talking $327 billion that it cost the U.S. economy. Uh, it's, uh, it's an expensive situation for something, to your point, that in actuality could be avoided. That's right. 80, so when you're talking about type 1 versus type 2, type 1 is not preventable. But only 5 to 10 percent of people with diabetes have type 1. Right. The rest have type 2. And up to 80 to 90 percent of those cases can actually be preventable with lifestyle changes. Losing weight, healthy eating habits, drinking a lot of water, and exercise. So, is it fair for taxpayers who are paying for a lot of the the, 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 the medicines here to, who have to endure this three hundred twenty-seven billion dollars for a lot of it? Is that even fair, or is it? That's a philosophical debate, Charles, and that's what we talk about with healthcare. Healthcare right. people are saying healthcare is a right, but is it a right when people are bad choices, conscious right. decisions are actually making these diseases? Well, we know one thing: it is an epidemic. Fatty liver is an epidemic. They're all epidemics, and a lot of them could be prevented. Doctor Nicole, it's always great seeing you. Thanks for having me, Appreciate Charles. It.